Okay, the Unbound team at the Staff of Life pub in Moseley. Disappeared. He was needless to say distraught, furious. A whole welter of emotions went through him. We're very quiet. We might be able to hear something. Is there anybody here with us? Did you hear that? <laughs> I don't believe you're taking these ghosts seriously. <laughs> I don't believe you're taking these ghosts seriously. Of course I am. Because <coughs> there's one behind you. <laughs> the person seemed to move quicker at hearing the shout and appeared to glide over the uneven sand. Tom started to run, calling his son at the same time. Closer, closer, Jack, closer still. Now we have with us Joan Clerkenwell, a local historian who's going to... And psychic. Excuse me? Local historian and psychic. Look, I have one of my business cards. You believe you can commune with the dead? Oh, yes. Though as I discovered my gift only recently, I can't quite do people yet. The correspondence course should have me doing pets within the month. Correspondence course? Oh, for pity's sake. If you can't do people or pets, what can you do? Sheep, mostly. And cows. I was possessed by a cow once, and for a whole week afterwards I could do nothing but moo. My husband found it most disconcerting, especially when we were in bed playing vicars and... Um, but you're also a keen amateur historian. And that's why you're here. You're going to tell us all about the spooky history of the Staff of Life. Ah, oh, well, yes, there's the thing. You know I told you the staff might be haunted. Yes? Turns out I mistyped my Google search, and unfortunately there is no record of ghostly activities at the staff. No ghosts? No ghosts. No strange noises or peculiar smells. No gruesome murders, and not even any satanic rituals. I'm sorry. I guess that means the interview will be shorter than expected, then. I did hear tell that there might have been a particularly fierce argument one night. There might even have been some swearing. Did one of your dead cows tell you that? Oh, and I did come across a story that struck me as a little odd. But there weren't any ghosts, and it doesn't really have an ending. Well, I suppose we've got a few minutes to kill before the next story. It won't take that long, I'm afraid. It concerns a man called Arthur Graves, a writer, funnily enough. He came here in 1936 with his wife June and his little daughter Millie. They were staying as guests of the owner. Arthur was hoping to get some inspiration to finish his latest book. And June, she was hoping that a change of scenery might help Millie who was becoming rather disruptive at school. From what I've read, the time here was entirely uneventful. Oh, really? <laughs> Fascinating. Entirely uneventful. That's just brilliant. Right, moving on with the next story. No, no, that's not the odd bit. The odd bit came on the day they were due to leave. The owner was expecting them down for breakfast, and when they didn't show, he went up to look for them. But their rooms were entirely empty. No trace remained of the Graves family. Really? So they were eaten by monsters that cleaned up after themselves? Or they checked out early? One of the two. I concede there may have been a perfectly plausible, logical, highly likely explanation for their disappearance. But I think there's more to it than that. Can you not feel a dark and sinister presence beneath our feet? Oh, I can explain that. It's because this place is built on an ancient Bovar burial mound. We'll all be going moo by the end of the night. Now, can we please get on with the next story? Yes.
What is it? What's wrong? There was panic in her voice, and Alan switched the light on, trying to smile. A terrified guess expression must be nearer to the grimace. I didn't touch it, I swear I didn't. Poltergeist. And another one. Which one? <laughs> they would never do this on Most Haunted, you know. They'd never fake Movement. the possibility of a ghost. Okay, that footstep. She walked stiffled like a zombie. No, no zombies. There was no coming back from this. The husband wasn't going to sit up and try and eat her brains. This was real. Our second interview of the evening is Dr. Ruth Evans of De Montfort University. Doctor, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Of course, you're not a medical doctor, are you? No, no, my PhD is actually in parapsychology. So you're a bona fide expert in the supernatural. As opposed to Mrs. Mad Cow disease. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure anyone could be an expert in the supernatural. I mean, what most people believe to be supernatural or paranormal phenomena actually have perfectly rational explanations. For example, you may have heard of infrasound, the bass vibrations that we can't hear but can feel on a subconscious level. Many people describe that feeling as strange and unnerving. Which, of course, brings us to the question that I'm sure everyone in the audience wants to hear. Um, yes? Have you ever thought of resigning your post and setting up your own ghostbusting agency? Pardon? Who are you going to call? Dr. Ruth Evans. You know, ghostbusters. Have you even worked on your own proton pack to show to everyone? I'm not sure they're even scientifically possible, so no. Have you ever been slimed? Well, there was an ex-boyfriend. What's your favourite ghost, spirit or miscellaneous demon from Tobin's Spirit Guide? This really wasn't what I was expecting to be talking about. Stop! Stop everything! I found proof. Proof that something went seriously awry when the Graves family came here all those years you ago. You've had your turn. Oh, really? Listen, listen to this. Millie is often disruptive in class, exhibiting unprovoked flashes of temper and occasionally setting fire to the gymnasium. That's from a school report in 1936. And... Every time I go into her room, I find all the furniture rearranged into new positions. She says her toys come out and do it when no one's looking. I just tell her not to tell stories, but she just says, Daddy tells stories, so why shouldn't she? That's from one of June's letters to her cousins. And? Isn't it obvious? The girl Millie clearly has latent psychic and telekinetic abilities. And her presence drew some sort of malign spirit to this place. It's obviously having a cow inside your head turns you crazy. Mark's right, with his implication that this doesn't prove anything. Then play this. How are we supposed to play a big old round cassette tape like that? I can put it on the big old round cassette player we've got back here, bump it through the speakers and see what it says. And why have you got something like that? I'm a sound guy. OK, then. Give him the cassette. There you are. Start playing it about there. Right. The church bell tolled the eleventh hour of the post-meridium. Harold Saxby knew his final hour was upon him. He held his head in his hands and... Oh, for Christ's sakes, I said I didn't want to be... Oh, it's you, Millie. Shouldn't you be in bed? Why aren't you finished, Daddy? Because writing's not that easy, darling. I only wish it were. But he keeps calling. He keeps asking when you'll be done. He... Has my agent been on the phone again? He likes your stories ever so much. He said as soon as you're done, he's going to come and take you away. That doesn't sound like... Just who are you talking about, Millie? The man, Daddy. The man who keeps calling. But he's got all impatient. I saw him from my window. He's waiting outside. Will he take us too, Daddy? 
Will me and Mummy be coming with you? Outside, you say? I think I need to go have words with this man of yours, because none of us are going anywhere. That's right, Daddy. Not until you finish your story. Shush now. No more talk like that. We're going outside right now to... Oh my... Sorry, I just thought I saw a dark, mysterious figure out in the window. It's okay, it's gone now, it disproves the disconcertingly dark night. Disconcertingly dark night? Have you been possessed by a thesaurus? First cows, now dinosaurs. When will this madness end? End? It's only just begun. Again. Your ungodly stories have summoned up whatever demons took the Graves family. If I had an imagination as dark and twisted as yours, I could describe the terrible end to this story. But as I don't, I shall remain thoughtlessly optimistic. Here, take this. It bears the words of an ancient and powerful spell used to banish evil spirits. I shall now depart to try and ward off the demon, but if I fail, recite the incantation and pray that this time I did not mistype my Google search. I'm going after her. You guys stay here and carry on with the next story. I'll be back in time for the round table. Killed very carefully so as not to spoil their looks. Then stuffed, dolled up, arranged on their little stages. It was so horrible I rushed outside and was lying to be sick. Nothing happens. Let's just go on the round table. Where's our friendly neighbourhood psychic? She's not my zombie cow, is she? Enough with the cow jokes. Do any of you believe in ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. I'd like to anyway. I always feel I have a very open mind. That means anything can get in. <laughs> How about you guys? Any thoughts? That well, sounds probably something. I don't know what, but I think there's probably something afterwards, yes. Yeah, I like to think so. I don't want to be a ghost, though. I mean, think how boring. Supposing you just died somewhere really, really dull and you had to keep haunting it forever and ever and ever. I mean, is that what any of us want to do? I want to have more fun with my death than that, personally. <laughs> haunt, haunt somewhere mobile, a car or something, and then you can move around. Yeah, yeah. Caravan. You get scrapped yeah. after a while. Yeah. Yeah. I personally would like to be reincarnated and start the whole fun thing all over again, you know. Yes, but then, then that would exclude the possibility of ghosts, surely, if you're thinking. Yes, but some people get to be ghosts because they don't want to be reincarnated or maybe because they just can't in all seriousness, can't leave behind, I think you were saying this earlier, some element of their life. They've got something unfinished, or maybe they've just done something so evil and their souls are so shriveled they can't move on. I have a friend who works as a clairvoyant, and she maintains that you choose to come back if you wish. Mm. So that, that's where I have the problem, because I, I think if you, if you lose somebody close to you, Mm. then you assume that they will come back to you to sort of say everything's okay or what's going on and everything else. So because that hasn't happened, I sort of don't. But then I've had a couple of things happen to me where, in, in company with other people, where you can't give a real explanation of what it is. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't become like a, a UFO type thing. It's like you just yeah. don't understand what it is. So I think that's your scariest moment. Sorry to take over, but I just thought, because, <laughs> you, you know, you told well, us about this pub. Oh, the, that, I, I, I still think it's this part. She believes it. What's the, what's Your story. The, what's the scariest? What's the go? What's the, the scary? Ghost? The scariest moment I've had. I, I have woken up once or twice beside people who I did, and that was pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> But were they corporeal? Yeah, they were corporeal. Has anyone else experienced this sort of thing? I've I've had different supernatural experiences. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that has helped you want to be get into this sort of genre? Do you think? No, I think it's just fun anyway, isn't it? Yeah. It's interesting because I I haven't done it. I think many of the people here have grown up reading horror and ghost stories and I never have mm-hmm. I've read one horror novel in my life so you know any, any input I've had from, um, from that side of thing has been very much film driven rather than um, mm-hmm. book driven and um, when I have read horror um, I very rarely find it scary you said you read one horror novel yeah. now I think Grand the short Chuck story one. is much more appropriate ah, yes. for ghost and horror fiction well, you, than you, the novel you look at Poe and some of the things he's done then, then there's some very powerful writing in a very short mm. short space so. yeah. Yeah. but um, I, I, I don't know It's um, you, you were saying about is that what got you into the genre for me it was, it was more just the 
the ability to spread your imagination and do things in every direction, and that includes science fiction, fantasy, horror, all of it. Um, the, the, the lack of boundaries, the, the fact that you can let your imagination go to places within the genre field that you can't anywhere else. Yeah, that's, that's what why I like science fiction. That's what got me in, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting how often you get a conventional, sometimes very literary writer who wants to branch out and do a ghost story. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's like everybody has one ghost story in them somehow, yeah. you know? Yeah. A lot of people, I mean, although technically ghost stories are a subgenre of horror, a lot of people don't see ghost stories as horror. Mm. Well, there are two different things. Right. Is that the PA system? Where's the sound guy? Is that the music? Fred goes to the noise. He said, can you stop that? He said, it's not me. That's classic stuff from Ghost (laughs) Well, I'd I'd still like to know what happened to Mrs. Clark. Nothing happened to her. Well, which obviously means something did, something bad. We're your guests here. I think that means you should respect us enough to tell the truth. Yes. Tell us the truth. <laughs> okay. She had a funny turn, you know, possessed by something. And, well, she said some things. Then, well, she died. It's like tragic, really. I did a little eulogy, then carefully laid her to rest in a dumpster. She said, before the night is done, one of you will be taken. Taken? Taken where? I don't know, Disneyland. It doesn't really matter, she was babbling. Even you said she was crazy. Now, we've got a round table to finish. Next question. If one of you had to be taken by a malign evil spirit to spend the rest of eternity telling stories in hell or on some other spiritual plane, who do you think it should be? Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to I was actually going to volunteer. Well, there we go. So, I can handle it. Don't worry. And I'll I don't, be back. <laughs> I don't think you're taking this quite as seriously as you really should. I'm sorry, sorry. Question for you. Do you think that the new, you know, the younger generation, people in their early 20s, mm. actually, who kind of are exposed to the gore, do you think that, that, that the tradition of the ghost story has been passed them. Do, do, do you see any new talent coming yes, through? Yes, I do. I've got some writers coming up. But who are sort of, you know, who are writing about ghosts rather than yes. the gore? Yeah, I do. I think it's still as popular now as it ever was. You've only got to look at the uh, Woman in Black. Paranormal. Woman in Black. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's yeah. Victorian. She wrote it in the 80s. It's a modern story. Yeah. Just set in but that's traditional. the 80s. What, what about now? Paranormal Paranormal Activity yeah. is a good example of mm-hmm. that in cinema, especially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because that's quite understated until yeah. usually the very end. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I think the other thing, that everything moves in cycles. So you have a lot of films now, you have the, the terrible sore films and the dreadful hostile <laughs> films, where it is just, you know, what can you it's physically do to a, a, a yeah. person's but body? usually when you get a range like that, you get a swing the Well, that's way. right, yeah. because I mean, I grew up through the 80s, reading horror through the 80s, and I was sort of reading sort of Stephen King and working backwards from mm. him, mm. and all the time there was the splatterpunk stuff going off, yeah. and the early Clive mm. Barker stuff was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it goes in a cycle, you do get the extreme and everybody focuses on the extreme for a while but all the while there's people working away in the background mm-hmm. and then it just swings back up again. Well, what about short stories? What about literature? Do we have any young people coming through right now? Oh, there's a oh, I think so. new novelist out. Her first novel's just out. Alison Littlewood. Yeah. 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 She's yeah. A yeah. very good. She's in my book. Alison's, did, Alison's doing a story for this one. Yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. She's, she's, she's very fantastic. good. Yes. Michelle, yeah. Michelle she was actually she was actually Dark Matter. Oh, it's a Michelle Paper, I've read two years ago. Absolutely fantastic. A period ghost story set in the Arctic expedition in the 20s or yeah. 30s, 20s, 30s, wasn't it? Interesting. And it's very, very well done. Yeah. Adam Neville. Adam Adam Neville. Neville. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. 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 kind of M.R. James tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Does anybody remember the Pan book of yeah. oh, horror? Yeah. Yes. They yeah, used to have these yes. really creepy yeah. dust jackets. Mm. Yes. And me and my friend got them when we were kids and far too young to be reading that stuff. Mm. And yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it, it's interesting though that you know you, you asked about novel and we've come back again to talk about short stories. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 one thing that I've I found increasingly and and the publishing industry will tell you that anthologies don't sell. Um, and I'm not sure they're a hard to sell. They're hard yes. to sell. I, I mean, also think they do well online because well, it's the kind of thing you can read easily on a screen. Mm-hmm. Short I, story. Yeah. I, I think anthologies. I mean, as, as Mark knows, and, and you know, through New Compress, mm-hmm. I, I've championed anthologies. Yeah, because you are the anthology man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just feel that it's such a wonderful way to introduce 
readers to new writers. Mm. Yeah. So and new genres mm. of fiction, yes. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But, you know, you, you read a short story, think, oh, you know, you go through a collection, one or two really stand out for you, mm. and you think, great, I'll go and try their novels. Mm. And you haven't had to invest and buy a novel. Yeah. So I, I think short stories yeah. can be very powerful yeah. in their own right and also mm. as introductions. It reminds me, you know, your story, it reminded me, has anyone seen, like, The Slender Man on the internet? Yeah, it's like this yeah. urban sort of legend that was completely made up on a blog site. Mm. And um, so people Photoshop images and it will have children in it. And in the background, you can just see the silhouette of a very tall, very thin man. Mm. And the, sort of, the idea is he shows up in the pictures behind the children, he follows them. And then when they see him, they, get, they go missing. And here's an interesting thing. After you'd watched the candy man, could you stand in front of a mirror no. and say candy no, man? No, but he's had <laughs> people come I. up to him <laughs> saying they cannot do it and he thinks it's hysterical that people have never been able to do it ever. Mm. Because he completely made what it. What do up. you do? You say candy man five times and he's supposed to appear behind you just You've got to see candy killer. Yeah. I don't like that sort of thing. What? There's a mirror over there. Um, <laughs> yeah, we could do it. I don't know. I, 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 in horror films, like even in The Woman in Black, whenever there's a mirror and shot, I'm like, no, no. Well, no. mirrors is, have so much potential. They do, yeah, absolutely. Stage, and yeah. glass. And like a, um, a window like that where it's completely dark outside, all you can see is the reflection and something yeah. that's right there. Mm. But that, that's and who is not reflected in the glass? <laughs> yeah. yes. How many vampires are there in this room? Let's <laughs> check. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, can I have a round of applause for our authors? Amanda Hemingway. Paul Kelly. Marie McLeady. Mark Webb. And Ian White. God. Everyone's still here. No one's been taken. Everyone's been taken. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.